Well, welcome to the big announcement for Missouri Good Neighbor Week honorees in 2023. Jennifer Prophet, thank you for joining in on these uh, announcements. Well, it's a pleasure. I'm so excited about this. We've been working so hard to find the right people. I'm so excited that we get to announce them. <laughs> it's taken a while to get to that point this year. <laughs> so much good stuff going on in Missouri this year. It's, it's uh, awesome. And some really great nominations. And so I'm excited to be at this point. And the crazy thing is we're already talking about next year uh, some too. So <laughs> We are. Keeping this going. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll but we'll pause that for just a moment and and have a chance to kind of celebrate what happened in 2023 yes. with Good Neighbor Week. So we had because we had some good results. We have this kind of graphic that's floating around on social media that kind of captures the impact of what happened this year. But I'll dive into a few of these numbers and more of this sort of grid. The 19,778 acts of neighboring in one week. Our goal had been to duck document 15,000 and mm -hmm. we blew right past that goal. Yeah. It's awesome. And thank you to everybody who participated and helped make that happen. Uh, columns and news articles and TV spots all over the state, uh, 2.4 million media impressions, um, nearly 9,000 unique visitors to our Missouri good neighbor week.com website, which is still mm -hmm. up and available. Mm -hmm. Uh, 62 people nominated as most engaged. And you and I talked about this as we we're going through them. They were all good nominations. Excellent. Uh, yep. I wish every year. single one of them was in my neighborhood. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, 74 special service projects done statewide. I've just got to brag on the county extension councils a little bit. We had 61 county extension councils do a okay. day of service as part That's of amazing. Missouri Good Neighbor Week. So that really help the overall numbers and the overall right. participation levels. And uh, and then one thing I think to celebrate that doesn't show up elsewhere, um, but we had two cities that used this week as an opportunity to sort of do their own sort of nominate a great neighbor campaign. Uh, yeah. That was Seymour and Webster Groves. And they both took local nominations and did um, honoring of a local engaged neighbor. And it was great to see those cities latch onto that idea. Yep. Yep. I agree. That was exciting when we saw those things come through that, you know, a whole organization and said, let's, let's really lean into this and get our own nominations and uh, spread the word about good neighboring. Maybe it's a trend. Future yeah. Trend. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're talking about future trends. I don't want to get onto that road. I, I, let's go with <laughs> what, what we finally settled on as the 12 Missourians who are going to be honored this year as most engaged neighbors. And they do receive a certificate by mail and a, a prize check as well that they're free to do whatever they'd like to with that prize check. But uh, it's great to be nominated, but 12 of these are going to be recognized here individually. We'll say just a few words about each one. Uh, John and Cheryl Dabney in Lebanon, they were actually nominated by one of their neighbors um, who are both handicapped. And they had a very nice nomination about how the Dabneys have really taken care of them, mowed their yard, done home repairs for three years. And as one of the, as the nominator wrote, we're just so blessed to have them as neighbors. We thought it was a great example of someone uh, caring for a neighbor uh, because of their disability could be easily overlooked. And yep. so John and Cheryl Dabney, the first honoree. All right. Well, the next one, um, and I want to uh, start out by apologizing to this individual because I don't know exactly how their name is pronounced. Um, I Googled it so that I could get it as close as possible, but I know there's a lot of different pronunciations of last names. So uh, Aaron Dehoyne, um of St. Louis, Missouri, that's as close as Google and I could get <laughs> to saying that name correctly. Um, but regardless of how you say the last name, he's valued in his neighborhood. He was nominated because of um, his striving to make the neighborhood more beautiful and just a happier place is what his nominator said. He organizes trash picks up, pickups, um, but he goes beyond that and tries to secure native trees. So he works with other organizations to not only make the place more beautiful, but really um, provide an environment that that beauty is going to thrive and, and be natural. Um, his nominator says he's the epitome of an engaged neighbor making a difference, one piece of trash and one tree at a time, which 
which is just inspiring because sometimes good neighboring sounds like such a big thing and he's taken it um, to a small level to do a big thing. And I, I love that. So yeah. congratulations, Aaron. I love that, especially like the use of native trees. That's off, awesome. Right, right. It's just a, that extra level of care um, yeah. that really was impressive to us as we were uh, choosing choosing the award winners here. Gerald Wirths of Pilot Grove. He's an 89-year-old veteran, mm -hmm. but he is known for sharing the bounty from his garden, from his tool shed, and his hospitality all over his neighborhood, but especially with those who are shut in. And we talked so much about the epidemic of loneliness. Yeah. Um, just felt that this was a great example of what a neighbor could do to overcome that. In fact, the nominator wrote, he's a great friend to people in need and those who are lonely. Yeah. So Gerald Worth in Pilot Grove, Missouri. Yeah, that was a great one. All right, Bill Mueller is from Kimberling City, Missouri, and he is described as the caretaker of the neighborhood. So he drives people to the doctor. He takes care of people's um, property when they're out of town, and he organizes neighborhood parties. He just is uh, one of those people that's the glue that holds everything together um, and is just kind and caring towards his neighbors. So congratulations, Bill. Great example there in Kimberly City. Mm -hmm. Barbara Thurman in Springfield, Missouri. She was nominated for her leadership and efforts to elevate connectedness. Mm -hmm. I love that word. There <laughs> in Roundtree Neighborhood Association in Springfield. She's brought back the welcome wagon to their large neighborhood. And during Missouri Good Neighbor Week, she organized a Chalk Your Walk event that celebrated good neighbors and had 38 participants. Great job, Barbara. Yeah. In Webster Groves, uh, we have Jen Fisher. So she was recognized um, through that local efforts of Webster Groves. And there were so many good ones in Webster Groves. But this one for us rose uh, to the top because she just continues to do things that bring people together. She organizes neighborhood meetups. She organizes the annual block party. Um, and when tragedy stuck, struck in the neighborhood and there was a neighbor um, who lost their home to a fire, she organized a GoFundMe that raised a lot of money in a short amount of time to help that neighbor in need. Um, and so we were really impressed um, by, by what she's doing there in Webster Groves. Wow. I'm impressed and inspired already just reviewing these again. Right. Uh, right. What a great, great list of 12. And we'll continue with Ray Morgan of Cleveland, Missouri. Ray is a leader and volunteer in this small town of 600 people. Uh, he does maintenance work all over the community. He clears snow from driveways. He mows people's yards and he puts up flags along Main Street for special events. I love that. Yes. His uh, nominator wrote, one thing that stands out to me is his positive outlook and happy demeanor. And who doesn't need more neighbors like that? Yes, yes, for sure. All right, we are back into the St. Louis area here in Ellisville, Missouri with Jenny Zarnelli. Um, Jenny is a trustee for her neighborhood. Um, and not only does she uh, do that kind of volunteer job, her she's nominated for just her thoughtfulness in how she does it. So she greets all of her new neighbors. She visits neighbors who are ill, drives people to the doctor. Um, but she also gets her neighbors together for um, a monthly luncheon for the ladies on the street. Um, and so um, her nominee said, you know, her thoughtfulness just makes her really special and it's a really special place to to live so uh jenny in ellisville and also in st louis dr melissa nash i understand she's a graduate of the neighborhood leadership academy discovered mm -hmm. that i guess afterward but she was nominated because she's opened a first sort of the first free healthy food market in st louis area and she serves about ten thousand pounds of food monthly with her mobile food marts and her wellness center. And as her nominator wrote, she's been an advocate and champion for our neighborhood. Yeah. Everyone needs a champion, yeah. especially neighborhoods. Yeah, that's so important and inspiring, as you said. Yes. All right, Greg and Suzanne Smith are our next winners. They're active volunteers. Again, we have another trustee in the neighborhood. And I love that because it's a 
Um, it's a job that people can do in lots of different ways. And I love to see people stepping up and doing it in such thoughtful ways. Um, they uh, bring diplomacy is what one of their nominators said, wisdom and care um, for appreciation and careful stewardship of the neighborhood. Um, but then they also go above and beyond and hang a hundred thousand Christmas lights um, for their annual neighborhood display. And uh, that is something I could never do. I'm lucky to get, you know, one string up. And so uh, I just imagine the joy that brings to their neighborhood and the pride that brings to their neighborhood that just proves that, you know, going one step above um, really does make neighborhood, uh, makes people excited about their neighborhood and makes it a better place to live. So um, I love examples like that. And congratulations to Greg and Suzanne. I love their story and their nominator was so enthusiastic about their nomination. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Shribner in Sedalia, Missouri, known for creating joyful experiences in the neighborhood, things like an annual Halloween block party and an annual neighborhood cleanup. His nominator wrote that Lee uh, Lee's selflessness and devotion to the community makes him an outstanding nominee. Sounds like he has his finger in a lot of neighborhood things that bring people together. Yeah. Lee Schribner and Sedalia. Right. Well, and then last but not least, we have Katie Westcott. Uh, Katie is from Chula, Missouri. Um, and the nominator says she is the glue that holds our community of 200 together. We're a small community with a big heart and she keeps it pumping. And being from a really small community myself, I can just picture Katie um, and what she does for that community. And um, it, it's such an important part of the fabric of the, the world to have these small communities and those small communities are held together by the Katie's of the world. So Katie, great job. Keep that community heart pumping and congratulations on your nomination. <laughs> that was fun. We had examples of engaged neighbors all over the state, urban yep. and rural, right? Yep. Little a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll, as Donnie Marie used to say. <laughs> right, because it doesn't matter where you live, you've got a neighbor, and therefore you have a chance to be an engaged neighbor, um, and we love it. Love how that language is catching on and more people are uh, using that, but we didn't just uh, do honorees in one category. Uh, these were nominated, and then we uh, have honorees out of a, another category for the best active neighboring. These are people that did report what they had done in their neighborhood or maybe what they did together, sometimes as organizations doing reporting. It helped us reach that number for the acts of neighboring that happened across the state. And then we sifted through those uh, in, a, in a blind way to determine what we thought were the types of acts of neighboring we really wanted to uh, celebrate and say we need more of. Mm -hmm. And so we'll get on to that list here next we got some pictures to go along with each of these yeah all right well it's a pleasure to start out with sherry McAllister and dnl florist in houston missouri if you've been following along you might recognize uh sherry because she's been really engaged um but the the reason this rose to the top for us again is because um her her project is to give roses to the community. So you can go into DNL Florist and get a dozen roses. Your um, task is to give away eleven and keep one for yourself. Um, and she just keeps expanding this every year. Um, and what I love about that is that she's bringing neighboring to organizations and having sponsors and other other community partners. And so not only are people all over this community. Um, um, of Houston, Missouri, getting roses, but um, people are coming together around something, including organizations. And that's such a, a great example of um, what brings community together is individuals and organizations working together for the common good. Uh, so we love this example of everything that's going on in Houston, Missouri, and, and it's expanding across the county, um, and it just keeps getting bigger every year, and it's a great thing. She has a number of volunteers helping, but uh, every volunteer effort like that needs a uh, a leader, and yep. that would be Sherry. Yep. So congratulations, Sherry. Well, number two is kind of a, a group uh, instead of individuals, but it's the City of Springfield, KY3TV, and Springfield Green County Park Board. 
that pulled off this uh, massive production of uh, four different neighborhood block parties during the week of Missouri Good Neighbor Week. It was going to be five, but one of them got rained out. <laughs> and there were other partners involved from Highland Dairy, which you see here, they hand out ice cream products to um, uh, the neighborhood associations around each park and uh, an attorney in Springfield and multiple different partners. So pulling everybody together, coming up with entertainment and speakers and booths. And each of these drew several, several hundred people uh, at minimum. And uh, they were in sort of underutilized parks around Springfield and really uh, the whole point was to get people familiar with their neighborhood associations and do sort of a, a membership drive for that as well and really mm -hmm. elevate the community conversation about what it means to be an engaged neighbor. So great job, City of Springfield, KY3, and Springfield Green County Park Board. Yeah, it was an awesome example of everything they did this year. All right, now we have, this is a great picture, um, the Cooper County Extension Council and the 4-H clubs partnered on a pet supply drive during Missouri Good Neighbor Week. They wanted to make a positive, if you get that, <laughs> impact uh, on the lives of some deserving animals and uh, the people that love those animals as well. So they collected over 400 items. They leveraged multiple um, uh, partnerships and really brought the community to get together through people's um, joint love of animals. And um, as we say, we love our neighbors, our human and non-human. <laughs> uh, uh, so this was a great project and we're happy to honor them for this great act of neighboring. Well, I'm ready for this next one, but I'm not sure when to unveil the picture. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, love this I, guess, I guess I should just go ahead and click the button and do it. There we go. Uh, <laughs> this is Wanda in the in the back seat of this car, and she's got cucumbers in her hand. And um, this wasn't the only way that Wanda distributed her a uh, huge crop of cucumbers across Nixa this year. Um, but she she started out by just sharing a few during Missouri Good Neighbor Week with her neighbors, and she had a bumper crop this year. She actually ended up gifting out 500 cucumbers uh, and went beyond just neighbors that kind of spread through, across the whole community. But what we loved about that is she shared her story on social media there in that community and talked about how kindness was important, how we needed more of that. And it kind of spread throughout the, the town. Other people started doing some things and joining with her. And yeah. because of Wanda's kindness, uh, she she actually ended up being the recipient. She said she got uh, fresh eggs brought by her house and green beans and pie and seedling trees and all sorts of things yep. as people sort of embrace this idea of neighborly kindness during Missouri Good Neighbor Week. But Wanda got it started with her cucumber deliveries. <laughs> yeah. You know, David, and, and we talk a lot about asset-based community development and using the gifts that you have and building on those. And I love this example because, you know, you might not think a bumper crop of cucumbers is, is much neighboring. And then look at all the things that came from just using the asset that she had. The one thing she had was a lot of cucumbers. <laughs> yes. Yes. Great example. And celebrate Wanda there in Nixon, Missouri. Yep. <laughs> Oh, Susan Peck. Um, Susan Peck uh, is part of an organization called Na uh, Maple Good out of Maple Wood, Missouri. Um, and they've done a number of things uh, over the years in neighboring starting. Uh, they started this organization in the pandemic. Uh, Susan and I were a part of the Neighborhood Leadership Academy together. So I'm happy to be able to announce this because this year she really wanted to focus in on Missouri Good Neighbor Week. And so they did um, an event called Rock and Roll, and they have a program called the, the Maple Good Dino Dancers. So um, they have a group of people who dresses up in dino con costumes and goes around and just kind of spreads joy at different events, sometimes, especially during COVID, like the shut in in front of their house or their windows, the dino dancers would do a little thing. Um, so they did that for Missouri Good Neighbor Week, as well as um, the Maple Good You Rock program that they do. 
too. They did a special um, event over uh, this this week, and so they made um, uh, invited people to come and paint these rocks, which is a, a picture of that. They also made over 200 um, bags of homemade cookies uh, that they passed out during Missouri Good Neighbor Week and this uh, event that they had. So Susan, keep up the great work in Maplewood. Um, congratulations on your great acts of neighboring. Fun to celebrate them for their continued work, right? Because yep. they've been doing it for a while and they're doing it to continue to do it. Yep. One, that, uh, one that just got started, and this was a new effort there in Pulaski County, Waynesville, Missouri, the Pulaski County Extension Council. Now that's a, a, a small extension office there, small staff and uh, small in number, but they got themselves organized to do a food drive focusing on military families. Fort Leonard Wood is right there in their community. And so they thought about their assets and their mm -hmm. uh, connections that they had. And I was educated through their effort uh, there's something called Missouri Blue Star Families, and they work with uh, military families. And I didn't know that mo many uh, military families experience food insecurity uh, during their first year or two of service. And so this was really a food drive for those families that were new to military service and in need. And a good partnership, I think, that has uh, possible continued benefits when partnering with the Missouri Blue Star families. Maybe uh, maybe something we can add into the mix next year. I really appreciate Pulaski County taking that step and finding that connection. Yep. yep. Yeah. It's a, it was an inspiring, inspiring one to be sure. Yes. All right. The next one, um, Sergeant Thomas Crosley of J Jasper County Sheriff's Office in Carthage, Missouri, organized along with other deputies um, a movie night. So those deputies are all assigned to the Village of Airport Drive. And so they they brought people together just for fun, bring your lawn chairs and watch a movie uh, here in this neighborhood. And what a great way to bring people together, um, bring community organizations together, um, a simple act of neighboring with a you know, big impacts. I'm sure all those kids laying on the blankets or whatever, uh, just really enjoy themselves and feel good about their community and the neighbors in their community just from this simple event. So we we thought it was a, a, a great one to highlight. Yes. The next one is Marilyn Prosper in Springfield. I, I talked with Marilyn before she did her project. She called to kind of see if I thought it was a good idea. So I had a little inside track on this. I love that Marilyn looked around her cul-de-sac and said, what do we have as an asset? And one of the things they had are a couple of restaurant owners on their street. And next she kind of said, what else might be unique about our street? Well, they have quite a bit of ethnic diversity on their street. So they organized not just a potluck, but an ethnic potluck, mm -hmm. everybody bringing their favorite dish that represented their, their family. And she, uh, uh, she said out of the 22 Homes, they had 12 that participated, represented. So that's a great turnout. And the yeah. PAR officer, which is uh, their local uh, contact with the Springfield Police Department, came and celebrated with them at their uh, potluck. So we love that focus, that sort of ethnic uh, connection that she found as yeah. an asset. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Next we have Darla. Um, there's a, a chalk the walk sign there. She worked uh, closely with her neighborhood association to do a cookout. They delivered cookies to 99 houses. Um, and that, that cookie had, a uh, a, a little sign on it that talked about, you know, the HOA and just happy National Good Neighbor Day. And so um, we love all that she's doing to bring that community together. Patriot Place HOA, and they were very involved. And she, they used some of our materials for Good Neighbor Week and for National Good Neighbor Day. So we always love to see that happening too, don't we, Jennifer? Yep, yep, yes, yep, we do. <laughs> and then last but not least, uh, Kathy Baker of Republic, Missouri. Kathy, uh, grew a large bed of flowers. I, I'll say this about Kathy. She planned way ahead <laughs> for Missouri Good Neighbor Week. She planned a large bed of flowers. She uh, gathered up vases. She ended up delivering these to 25 different neighbors. 
you may see those cards hanging on those. Those are all hand painted. Wow. With different neighbors in mind. And she delivered those during Missouri Good Neighbor Week. What a talk. Talk about a, a burst of happiness and, and just really demonstrated that she took time to, mm-hmm. to really show care toward a neighbor and was thinking about them when she handed these out and she planned way ahead. So thanks for being a champion for Missouri Good Neighbor Week, Kathy, and we salute you for your top act of neighboring. Whoa, Jennifer, yeah, that's, that's a lot. lot. It was. <laughs> I love um I love that. I love we went through all the nominations and reports in. Uh it looked like Green County uh kind of led the way this year in numbers, but but not far behind was St. Louis County and Texas County and Boone County. Mm-hmm. So it's certainly uh spreading around the state. We really had submissions from all across the state, it, yeah. it seemed. And uh, but excited for what 2024 holds, but excited also to have a chance to celebrate these honorees. Yes. Thank you, Jennifer, for your support for the Hopeful Neighborhood Project being such an advocate um, for this effort. It wouldn't be possible without you. And I think uh, Missouri and Missourians are better off because of the the partnership and because of this week and look forward to celebrating it for many, many more years to come. So yes, the same, you. the same. So thank you everyone for the big and the small acts that you do of neighboring every day. It's what makes your neighborhood great. It makes your County great, your city great and overall Missouri, a great place to live. So thank you so much.